in previous program. The Golden Gates were the only stone gates among the other three entrances to the ancient city of Kyiv. In addition to the Golden Gates, the main south entrance, there were so-called Jewish Gates and Ladinsky Gates on the territory of the present-day Independent Square. The Golden Gates were the most powerful defensive structure in Europe at that time. It was not attacked by enemies through its entire history. The Golden Gates Museum. Its creation was timed to the 150th anniversary of the founding of Kyiv. A half century ago, it was mostly a ruined historical memorial accidentally discovered by archaeologists. Today, it is one of the most interesting museums in Kyiv. The original artifacts are skillfully interwoven into modern, yet at the same time, historically authentic reconstructions. Everything is done in a manner that sometimes it is impossible to tell whether it is actually an accident find or a modern reproduction. The Golden Gates is an outstanding fortification of the 11th century. One of the few buildings of Kievan Rus which was preserved until the present times. This historical monument preserved both the spirits and legends of that era. Its original name is one of them. According to researchers, the name of the main entrance of the country is associated with its place and role in the life of Kyiv. The name Golden Gates were borrowed from Byzantium, where the main gate to Constantinople is also called the Golden Gate. After a successful military campaign, foreign troops entered the city onto the arches. Of course, they brought with them many gold booties. These were the same horse carts carrying goods into Kyiv. Perhaps the dome of the Golden Gates Church was eventually covered with gilding. Accordingly, this gold was seen far beyond the city of Kyiv and the borders of Fortis. Moreover, legend has it that the Kun, which was the main monetary unit of the Kievan Rus times, was kept in a special storeroom in the Golden Gates. It is obvious that the Golden Gates weren't just an entrance to Kyiv. It was a fortification and a place around which the daily life of the city passed. Who built this outstanding structure and when? Unfortunately, the exact date of construction is unknown. During the Soviet period, it was dated to the year 1037. According to the Chronicle, Prince Yaroslav the Wise had built not only the St. Sophia Cathedral, but also the Ireninsky and St. George churches and the Golden Gates. The Church of the Virgin Mary and a number of other holy shrines are on this list. A deeply important issue arose with the throne tenure of Prince Yaroslav the Wise. He was much stronger politically than his predecessors. He not only developed everything left by Volodymyr, but started the major reconstruction of the city. Moreover, he had already devised the basic principles of urban planning of the city of Kyiv. Based on research conducted, the building concept turned into reality by Prince Yaroslav the Wise was truly enormous. The Golden Gates and the St. Sophia Cathedral in front of them were just one of the elements of a massive urban planning schematic. But its shape was much bigger. It was a vector. It was 
Uh, In fact, his idea was much grander. It was a vector or some kind of an axis connected with the Golden Gates. It was the first time such a vector was opened before the residence of Kyiv. We are now on this vector surrounded by two huge monasteries, Irininsky and St. George. Unfortunately, they no longer exist, but their foundations remain intact. They were found by archaeologists and are being quite actively investigated. The Sofia of Kyiv complex stood on the top. Such a statement was considered acceptable in the times of the Soviet Union. In fact, the postulate of Prince Yaroslav the Wise as the city's planner was not questioned in the first decades of Ukraine's independence. But this trend has changed in recent years. Researchers have concluded that this article is mixed with different versions summing up the period of the reign of Prince Yaroslav the Wise. However, 1037 isn't the only date which scientists call the year of construction of the Golden Gates. The year 1017 is mentioned in different periodicals, including the primary chronicles. And again, the Golden Gates are in the context of the St. Sophia Cathedral. According to the first chronicle, this cathedral was founded in 1017. Still, historians continue to try explaining this situation, offering their comments on both dates, foundation in 1017 and further construction in 1037. Anyway, both dates of the founding of the Golden Gates can be attributed to Prince Yaroslav the Wise. Historically, it is proven that Yaroslav the Wise took the throne as Grand Prince of Rus at the end of 1016. The fact is that the year 1016 was dedicated to the reign of Prince Yaroslav the Wise in Kyiv. He continued the family policy of Vladimir the Great, including the founding and development of the St. Sophia Cathedral. With modern research, we can assume that the founding of the Golden Gates could have been earlier, even perhaps during the lifetime of Vladimir the Great. After all, he was a far-sighted prince and was capable of designing the expansion of Kyiv fortress. Sofia of Kyiv can help unravel the mystery of construction of the Golden Gates. Both ancient chronicles and modern research note these two buildings are closely connected with each other and were components of one large system. According to the latest information of Doctor of Historical Sciences Nadia Nikitenko, the St. Sophia Cathedral, which is closely connected to the construction of the Golden Gates, was probably built in 1011. This year was determined by the staff of the Sofia of Kyiv National Reserve on the basis of a comprehensive study of both written and material sources. It includes the structure of materials based on which the St. Sophia Cathedral was built, epigraphic materials, graffiti inscriptions of walls, and an analysis of paintings together with a comprehensive analysis of sources that were later discovered. Therefore, it can be asserted that the Golden Gates were built not by Prince Yaroslav the Wise, but by Volodymyr the Great. But if it was so unassailable, why are only ruins left to our time? How did Mongolian Khan Batu succeed in taking Kyiv in 1240? A no less doleful legend is connected with the historical events that took place in Kyiv and Rus. It is said that an 18-year-old hero Mikhailo was among the defendants of the Golden Gates. He was the best archer of those times. Once checking out the guard post, Mikhailo noticed Khan Batu in the distance. He shot the arrow with a note attached in which the Khan of the Golden Horde was advised to withdraw his army from Kiev. Khan was very angry upon reading the note and later sent messengers with a demand to extradite Mikhailo. The young hero swore to Kiev citizens that he would break the enemy's army. But frightened citizens didn't believe him and betrayed Mikhailo. He stuck his spear in the Golden Gates and left the city. After that, Batu took the city. Despite this, researchers have their own version of how the Mongols managed to capture Kiev.
1240, Batu came close to Kiev together with his army. He waited one month till the goat swamp was frozen. The Mongol Tatars crossed the ice and began storming the Lednitsky Gate on modern-day Independence Square. Tatars defeated the defense of the city exactly through the Lednitsky gates. The Church of Tithus, the first stone church of Kiev and Rus, suffered from barbaric attacks. The Mongol Tatars destroyed the Orthodox shrine. The Golden Gates and the St. Sophia Cathedral were left aside and were saved from destruction during the battle. Of course, they were looted, their buildings were preserved. Mention of the Golden Gates disappeared from the European information space after that raid of the Mongols for two more centuries. In the next program. In 1648 Kiev citizens welcomed the army of Bogdan Khmelnytsky near the Golden Gates after his victory over the Poles in the battles of Zhovti Vody, Orsun and Pilavci. The well-known amateur archaeologist Kondrat Lochvitsky is in fact the pioneer of the Golden Gates in Kiev. He simply dug them out. According to some fact, Tsar Nicholas I arrived in Kiev to see the newly discovered historical monument. Upon seeing it with his own eyes, he announced the monument was worth preserving.